In a bygone era, amidst the pages of time, there existed an aged man, feeble and gaunt, tormented by his afflictions. He sought solace from a learned healer, entreating. Oh, kind doctor, I beseech you, mend my ailing soul. Pray, tell me, what nourishment graced your palate last night? Alas, replied the old man, I partook of nothing. And what, then, adorned your morning repast? The doctor inquired further. Nothing, I'm afraid, came the faint response. Observing not only the man's advanced age and infirmity, but also the gnawing hunger and listlessness that threatened to vanquish him, the doctor's heart swelled with compassion. Desiring not to burden him with discomforting counsel, the doctor uttered, Know this, the ailment that plagues you calls not for abstinence or medicine. To recover, follow the yearnings of your heart for a while. Indulge in whatever your soul craves, and embrace your desires, for in doing so, you may find restoration. The afflicted man acknowledged the doctor's wisdom, but bemoaned. Alas, your guidance is sound, yet I find myself bereft of sustenance, for I have no means to procure a meal. Sympathy deepened within the doctor's soul, and mindful of sparing him any further sorrow in his twilight years, he advised. Then, my dear sir, I implore you to delight in the possibilities that lie within your reach. Pursue your dreams and aspirations with all the vigor you can muster. Savor every morsel, revel in every desire. Overwhelmed with gratitude, the suffering man exclaimed, Blessings upon you, noble doctor. Your words grant me solace. Alas, my desires and wishes have long remained unfulfilled. The doctor replied, May your aspirations find fulfillment, my dear fellow. I wish you well on your journey. I yearn to bask in the lushness of verdant landscapes and the melody of flowing waters. Revealed the ailing man. Indeed, that is a splendid endeavor for one in good health. Remarked the doctor warmly. Filled with newfound elation at the doctor's counsel, the suffering man ventured forth into the emerald meadows, where a babbling brook played a soothing symphony. Beside the stream, a contemplative dervish was engaged in his ritual ablutions, gently cleansing his hands and face. Observing the smooth and inviting nape of the dervish's neck, the old man was overtaken by an irrepressible urge to strike it. Conscious of the wrong of harming another, he recollected the doctor's counsel, to heed his desires and embrace his impulses. Thus, he found himself torn between his internal conflict. Unable to resist any longer, he summoned the courage to raise his hand and, with a swiftness he scarcely believed possible, delivered a resounding slap upon the dervish's ear, its echo resonating through the air. Despite the dervish's struggle to maintain his balance, he remained upright, and upon beholding the frailty of his assailant, he refrained from retaliating. With compassion in his heart, the dervish inquired, Unfortunate soul, was your blow intended to harm me? You seem unable to bear the repercussions of your actions, yet you found amusement in your deed. Is this madness? Bewildered, the suffering man confessed. I know not why I acted so. I yearned for it, and the doctor's counsel echoed in my soul. As for my laughter, it arose from the unexpected sound of the blow, unsure if it was the impact of my hand or the resonance of your neck. The dervish took the suffering man by the hand and brought him to the abode of the local judge, recounting the incident in detail, and proclaimed, This man has wronged me, and you, honorable judge, are the guardian of justice. I seek redress for this assault, that it may not go unpunished, for it is unjust for one to strike another without cause or retribution. The judge scrutinized the emaciated figure before him and realized that no retribution could be exacted from such a fragile soul. He felt compelled to counsel the dervish, saying, Dear friend, you see, this man is frail and burdened with affliction, and seeking vengeance may cost him his life. Retribution is fitting for those of strength and vigor, 
but not for one such as him. I beseech you to consider forgiveness, for it is said that therein lies a joy unmatched by vengeance, a realm where compassion finds its home. The Dervish retorted, How can I forgive? Your judgment rings unjust, cruel, and oppressive. If such rulings are to stand, who shall restrain the hand of those who would commit misdeeds? Every wrongdoing must face its due punishment. I cannot relent, you must exact justice. The judge gently implored. Yet, I beseech you to reflect upon his suffering and impending mortality. Withdraw your complaint, for this man is not of sound health. The dervish remained resolute, stating, I shall never be satisfied with such clemency. Turning to the suffering man, the judge inquired, Pray, tell me, how much money do you possess? Alas, none, replied the suffering man. In what sustenance adorned your mourning? Queried the judge. Nothing, came the forlorn response. The judge then addressed the dervish. Do you see? This man hungers, and a slap upon your face shall not diminish your standing. Forbear, I entreat you. How much money do you possess? I carry six coins. The dervish replied. Very well. The judge said. Part with three coins and extend them to the suffering soul that he may procure nourishment. God shall reward you for your benevolence. The dervish voiced his protest. Astounding! Am I now to be beaten and also pay for it? Your ruling is unjust, oppressive, and unwarranted. Pray, tell me, what is the price of a single slap? Thus ensued a heated debate between the judge and the dervish, while the suffering man contemplated that, in the eyes of the dervish, a slap bore a value of three coins. Amidst the deliberations, an irresistible temptation welled within him once more. In the midst of their discussion, he raised his hand again, and with a force that surprised even himself, delivered a stinging slap upon the judge's countenance, echoing through the chamber. He chuckled and added, Now, three coins for a purpose. The judge, understandably vexed, was left to grapple with this predicament, but the dervish, finding amusement in the situation, produced six coins and addressed the suffering man, saying, Here, three coins as payment for your slap, and another three as compensation for your strike upon the judge. Indignant, the judge confronted the dervish, exclaiming, What is the meaning of this? Are you rewarding this man for assaulting me? The dervish replied with a knowing smile, Indeed, if the act of slapping is commendable, it should extend to all, and if deemed despicable, it should be shunned by all. It is a pity that I lack further coins, for this second slap is worth a hundredfold, given the unjust ruling that necessitated it. Remember, what you dislike for yourself, do not impose upon others. In the midst of this lively exchange, the tale reached its conclusion, leaving a profound moral to be pondered by all who might come across this fable of the unjust verdict. The proverb do unto others as you would have them do unto you emphasizes the importance of treating others with the same kindness, respect, and consideration that we desire for ourselves. It reminds us to put ourselves in the shoes of others and to consider their feelings, needs, and desires just as we would want them to consider ours. This proverb serves as a guiding principle for fostering empathy, compassion, and fairness in our interactions with others. By practicing this principle, we create a harmonious and supportive environment where everyone feels valued and understood. Let us remember that the way we treat others not only reflects our character, but also has the power to inspire positive change and build stronger relationships. So, let's strive to embody this proverb and spread kindness and empathy, making the world a better place for all.